because I, I, I would argue if you want to have somebody good in your company, uh, it's smart people, smart people that want to win time, that want to do that, that want to be very productive, that want to be able to do something faster than their competitors. If anything, AI gives the possibility to build up competitive advantage, uh, but it gives the possibility to everybody to, to build up competitive advantage. It won't replace people. Um, the only thing that will happen is people will be replaced by people that use AI because they're more productive. Um, so uh, I, I don't think necessarily it replaces the treats that you're looking into uh, with people uh, because it, it, it remains the same game. You want to be productive. You want to be able to be faster than your competitor. And you now have uh, extra tooling to be able to do that. Uh, and so it's it, it continues to be an, an ever going knowledge game where it's really a knowledge e economy that uh, that we're into where it's about really understanding how uh, how to do things better faster and then stronger uh it, it, which relates to a good uh, french um song <laughs> I, I, think that, I think that's partially true meaning certainly uh when you're building any kind of a company any endeavor you're doing you want to have the best people and intelligence is the most important thing and the best people because everything is constantly changing and you need people to be able to adapt check uh i think where we are now entering a new age of building organizations uh, where before the way you scaled organizations is you got more and more intelligent people and you gave them better and better tools. But I believe in the age of that we live in now, let's call it the age of AI. Uh, competitive advantages are efficiency, our productivity, nimbleness, how quickly you can you can grab opportunities, you know, all of those things that have to do with efficiency. And so, uh, and because again, because AI is intelligent and because subject matter experts can use it and create automations that would have before required scaling via people, now actually reduce the number of people required, including the person that could potentially built it. Like that's the real goal is let me automate most of my job because I intelligent people person can move on to a new job and do that. And so I think those dynamics are radically different. And certainly that's what these organizations that are using Mind Studio now are seeing is it's, it's all about efficiency. It's about how few people can you have doing the work that used to be done by people. So these intelligent people can be leveraged in new ways to be able to grow businesses and create new processes. It's process refinement. And the skills you need to do it is the ability to analyze processes, understand how AI can be injected into them, and the ability to build and deploy these AIs. Now, that last one is easy now. Again, anyone can learn to do it by watching some YouTube tutorials. Chat. <laughs> can, you, can you analyze processes? That requires a specific sort of form of, of intelligence that not many people have. But I mean, and, many people have, but there are a bunch of people in organizations that are doing some kind of work now might not be the right people. This is not a, an uncommon skill. Most people can analyze processes, but, but not necessarily your employees, your current employees. All right, Henry, why so, don't you go next and then we'll go ahead. Uh, yeah, and yeah, no, I wanna, so, so I think, you know, I, I wanna change a little bit. We're, since we're talking enterprises, right? So one of our potential customers, they're a Fortune uh, 500 industrial manufacturing multinational. Uh, what we're talking with them is now you have a AI, AI officer directly reporting to CEO. Like this is not something I've seen four or five years ago. I think, you know, maybe it's the, it's the general AI, maybe it's the aspect, like the whole idea of AI as, as a first in almost any company now, and we have, you know, C-suites that directly report to CEO. CEO are pushing all these uh, initiatives. I think that's something that's really interesting about the idea of generative AI is, you know, we many of us kind of lived through the, the transformation, the BI error, the whole automation error, you know, the the um, SAP and so forth, right? I think that was top of mind, but the idea of AI now is living into the realm of CEOs. It's no longer just CIOs, but how does AI now become such a propellant for businesses, right? I think that's a cultural shift. I think that's once as, as we kind of go forward in the next three or five years, that's an element that's gonna drive a lot of the things we're gonna see when we talk to our customers, we talk to potential partners, you know, and then we need to be aware of this. How do we then make sure we're intelligently, you know, either through our software or tooling or advising them that we can help them as well uh, understand all of this, right? We need to make sure it's responsible. I think everybody talked about governance. You know, we're not just throwing AI in the wild, but there's a ways of 
being systematic and thinking about it and helping ensure we have the software with the processes with people in place for for these CEOs that's you know driving multi billion dollar companies right and and they're coming at this new for most part but they're they're super interested right i think that's the that's the dynamic that's fascinating but also kind of dangerous <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I agree. And here's but here's the thing I, I want to talk about is because it's a little bit different than what you said, Dimitri. And I think this is it's what I'm seeing. So let me put you in a place uh, the, the years relatively recently. The place is a national retailer. Um, I sat in their offices. It was a nightmare. They had a small but talented team of, of really deep experts in process intelligence, process modeling. And they were trying to serve hundreds of people. They were as a center of excellence. They were serving a huge community. And as experts, they were overwhelmed every day trying to get their work done. They would be sitting in meetings and dreading the next one because their expertise in tool jockeying was really what people had them there for, creating process models from scratch, being able to connect this to an enterprise repository, understand the impact of change to the business. That's a nightmare scenario. And I've lived that scenario, so have many of our clients. But this national retailer chain, about the, the idea is that AI takes that tool jockey, that specific tool expertise, off the table and now asks you for business expertise. How do you reorient your culture? Well, you give them expertise. We've helped them understand what the tooling is in AI, so what options are available to them. And then you rely on their business expertise. So instead of taking a small team of eight people serving hundreds, you have hundreds of people that are creating content themselves using AI, model generation, automatic process analysis and, and visualization, and then letting those eight people sort of shape and govern the direction. We, we think that data may be king, but context is its crown. And that's what I see over and over again with organizations that well implement API, AI. They put it all together, they bring people together, and they use their experts effectively. So it's not fewer people necessarily. It's the people being used for the right roles and having to hire less expensive people to get the same job or much better done with AI as an accelerator. <laughs>